Okay. Thanks. Uh, welcome to University of Salamanca. Uh, many thanks to Dr. Garcia Peñalbo, the organizer of the team conference, uh, and all of you to be in, in the University of, of Salamanca. Well, uh, I'm going to start my presentation about, uh, uh, with a brief overview about international projects at University of Salamanca. Uh, I think to start my presentation, the most appropriate is to know exactly who is the University of Salamanca and what is the role of uh, office like uh, my office, the knowledge transfer office in such institutions. As you can see in this slide, we are a very old university. Right? Uh, one of the oldest in Europe and really our birth is, is set in the year 1218 and uh, so we are very close to celebrate our eighth anniversary. In terms of research, uh, our research level is half regarding Spain. Depending on the indicators, uh, we move between positions 15 and 12 on a national level. And really these numbers uh, uh, also suffer a high degree of variability depending on the area to which we refer. We also have to take into account a factor that, from my point of view, is very important. We are not a technological university. The, the number of teachers or researchers linked to areas of experimental sciences of, or engineering is about 1,000 compared with 2,500 in total. This is a global problem in general university like ours. But if we consider that much of the available funds are usually focused on these areas of knowledge, this fact goes against us when we fight for funding in Europe or in national level. If we have to mention the knowledge areas in which our university stands out, I will say that we are international standing in areas of humanities, language, literature, law, teaching of Castilian, and have a high potential in areas of biotechnology and life sciences. We have advanced research centers like Cancer Research Center, Neuroscience Institute, or the Spanish Portuguese Center for Agricultural Research, as well as specific groups in information and communication technologies and education, like, for example, the organizers of this team conference. And in terms of funding, uh, we are a public university that depends on the regional government of Castilla y Leon with scarce resources. We have only baseline funding for operating spec spec expenses and extra funds come from competitive calls. In the region, there are another three public and four private universities, so competition for resources and students are unavoidable. Once I posted the brief summary of what is the university and we are, where we are, I will expose what are the knowledge transfer offices and what role they play in our universities. The, definition, the official definition of uh, KTO is that they are units of interaction between universities and the productive sector, which aim to bring together the business and academic development environment, as well as making the necessary efforts for the evaluation and use of result of from university research. That is, they are intermediary structures whose work is marketing the knowledge generated in our center through many different instruments. For example, the exploitation of IPR, creating spin-off companies, consulting activities, cooperative projects with companies, and they have assumed other tasks, such as promoting the participation in international research programs, such as framework programs from European Union or similar. The first KTO were implanted in Spanish universities in the early 90s as a result of the law for promotion and coordination of science 
of the year 1986. So it is a recent fact in our country, especially if we take as reference some European countries or the United States. Specifically, the KTO of the University of Salamanca began its activity in 1991. Its KTO works in universities in a very different way. They have many difference in functions, dependence, or size, and it's very difficult to make comparisons between them for this high level of diversity. The latest array of the KTO network of universities, of Spanish universities, which held its annual conference on Wednesday this week in Salamanca, tell us which are the tasks most frequently assumed by these kind of offices. Specifically are R&D, consulting contracts, management of collaborative programs, management of intellectual property rights, licenses, supply of services, creating of spin-off companies, and management of public research. Specifically, in the case of the University of Salamanca, we assume the following functions within the institutions. The promotion of the results of university research within the productive sector, the negotiation of contracts and agreements for cooperative research services or consulting, the information and assistance in the preparation of national cooperative projects, that is those projects in partnership with companies which are funded by public sector, and the information and assistance in the preparation of international projects in the field of research or related. For example, the seventh framework program of the European Union, part of the lifelong learning program or projects from national health of institutes of, uh, from USA. We also handle all matters relating IPR, from detection of technologies to the protection and commercialization of these technologies. And finally, we collaborate with other offices of our university in promoting the creation of a spin of technology-based companies which have their origin in knowledge of our institution. In this point, I want to take this time to think about a situation that is happening to us, and I don't know if it matches that may occur in other offices like ours in different countries. These days, in the conference of research in Spanish universities that we have organized, one of the speaker told us that the activity of an office like this, like uh, our office, is divided into different levels. The higher levels correspond with market position and activities, marketing, project promotion, that is, value-added activities. Activities that generate or will generate economic returns for the institution. And in the lowest level, we find other activities like management, justification, or audits. Doing the analysis of the time we spend in our activities, I can say that currently a majority of effective working time is devoted to this low level of activities. It's clear that in the future, we have to change the situation and need to move to, move to high level activities. If we specify in more detail the services we offer to researchers in international projects, this will be attendance to info days and conference of this type, and not only attendance, we try to bring to Salamanca the national representatives of the programs to contact directly with the researchers. Selective dissemination of calls, we send abstracts, general and specific condition of the programs, budget, and many information. We also search for partners through European Enterprise Network and other networks. The fact of having a full-time person to the international part of our business has had a very positive influence on the activity indicators of our institution. In this chart, we can see the evolution of the number of proposals submitted by professors in different programs managed by our office mainly seven framework program and lifelong learning program. As we can see, we have moved from a 
very small number of proposals by year, 15 in the year 2009 to 95 in the year 2013. This constant increase has allowed us to create among a broad group of researchers the culture of seeking funds beyond our borders. On the same line, we can see the data of projects granted. They are consistent with the, requ with the requests and also have suffered a significant evolution, reaching 14 this year. I will make a special reference in this moment to the participation in lifelong learning program, which present this data shown on this slide. As you can see, we have reached the two applic 20 applications this year, and we have been granted seven projects, and it's also a very positive evolution. I would like to remember that these are not the complete data of the University of Salamanca, but correspond only to the programs managed by my office, and don't cover all type of lifelong learning programs, projects, neither Tempus projects or Alpha projects, and not include data from dependent or associated entities with the University of Salamanca that are used to manage certain research activities, such as uh, Center for Cancer Research or University Hospital or laser tender. From my point of view, this, this data are still low for the potential of our university, and I think we have room for improvement, especially if we consider as an important factor that our university researchers have usually been provided with adequate funding at the national and regional level, and in this new financial framework we live, this option is not going to be as simple, and the way to continue with the researchers is to seek funds in Europe and other countries. In this, slide, in this line, the program Horizon 2020, the new program to fund innovation at the European level, should be viewed as a great opportunity for us to improve the tools, our tools, improve our offices, and enable our researchers to fight with European colleagues for this fund. This slide shows the distribution by type of entity of the economic returns obtained by Spain in the previous framework, framework program. As we can see in Spain, the funds raised by universities exceed 22%, while the funds raised by companies exceed 32. If these data are compared to those offered on Monday in Madrid by the Swedish Secretary of State of Education in his country, 64% of the funds were obtained by large universities, <coughs> while only 20% were by industry. You can do two readings of this situation. The first is that generally, their universities are more competitive than ours, and regularly they use these programs to fund his research. And the second is that this is combined with a greater capacity of its industry to fund its innovation with own economic resources. In any case, it's clear that the Spanish universities have still much room for improvement, and we therefore see everything in a positive way as an opportunity for the future. The goal that our government has been marked for Horizon 2020 are as follows. Our country overcome the economic returns compared to what we weave. The spine returns 8.3 from seven framework program and pay 5.1% of the budget. This means that the balance is positive at this moment. The goal for the next period is moderate. Spain, due its business and academic structure, cannot expect to duplicate his results, but it can reach the goal of 9.5% and mainly to involve, to involve more entities as coordinators 
and more entities as participants. So we have a situation in the past where there was money for everyone and was very, very easy to take it. And now the situation is which still there are enough funds. For example, the budget of Horizon 2020 increases over seven framework program, but has increased to the number of factors, more countries and more entities that decrease the chances of getting funding, if not done an adequate job. And if this situation moves to Spain, we can find this picture. This is the availability of funds in Spain. Too many fishermen and few fish at sea. And now the question is, how will the University of Salamanca meet this new scenario? Well, from the Ministry of Science of Spain, is recommending to universities three things. The first is that they must have defined a written strategy of how to encourage and promote the participation of researchers in international programs, including ways of funding these project offices based on percentage use of funds raised. The second one is to introduce such project offices, but they have to be proactive project offices to intensify knowledge management and value added services they offer, providing an integral se service of the promotion and management advices, including support in the preparation and proposal writing, developing, developing management and dissemination tasks in coordinated projects and other activities. And thirdly, defining indicators that allow a proper assessment of this activity. And in this way is where we are today. We have many international programs at our disposal, some related to teaching, others more related to mobility, others to research, and even some of them with mixed components. And our idea at this moment is to unify all the resources we have at our disposal to organize an international projects office that covers all the needs of our teachers and researchers under the conditions I have described above, so that will be sustainable over time and allow increased economic resources raised by the University of Salamanca. Nothing more. With this, I finished my presentation, and I would like to thanks again to Professor Garcia Peñalbo the invitation to present uh, to participate in, in this uh, international conference. Thank you very much.